so it's another scorcher <laughs> I don't think we've hit 100 degrees yet although the greenhouse says we have it's what 115 in the greenhouse but it gets hotter in there of course all the windows and doors are open on it but it still gets pretty hot so and the reason I keep bringing up the temperature I've gotten several complaints stop talking about the weather we know it's hot is I'm trying to explain to you that we don't have an air conditioner and that we can survive without an air conditioner regardless of what people say as you know I talk about here recently SHTF stuff that hits the fan and the differences between preppers and off-gridders and my philosophy is, is you got to test what you prep since we're not preppers we live the lifestyle we know that you know what it's hot we don't have an air conditioner whereas preppers are trying to figure out how to have an air conditioner when they what they really need to do is just shut it off and get used to the heat I'm actually very proud of of Carolyn and, and me of what we've been able to endure this is some pretty hot temperatures I don't think we're record temperatures but this is pretty hot and we stay stay fine of course just in case something goes wrong which it hasn't ever we got the truck with the air conditioner in, so if we had to we could get in it but, uh, the other day I went to town well we went to Dollar General like we do every Friday and we had the air conditioner on in the truck and when I got out of the truck, we went there, came back. I came back into the house and I sat down and I was uncomfortable. So just that quickly, I gotten used to the air conditioner. Just another aspect of something to think about. So the other day, a YouTuber, pretty large off-grid YouTube, was talking about an article that he read in the news. And he was saying that there was an Amish guy who has been in selling groceries and stuff. I guess he's got a little grocery store. Well, he wanted to sell his farm fresh meat. Now, since the guy has made the video, I've learned some things about this, and it's not entirely true what the guy said. It was true when he read the article. New updates have happened since then. The YouTuber said that this Amish guy had been inspecting, and they told him that he couldn't sell the meat without a special license from the government. So what he did was, is he decided to have a special members only area where they could come and buy his farm fresh meat because it wasn't inspected by the government so he found a loophole is what it was well just recently a judge had determined that he was in violation of the law and they federal and federal agents came out and told him that he had stopped selling the meat and there was I think a several th hundred thousand dollar fine involved and well what it is was I guess six years ago when they came to a store he signed an agreement to, I don't know, get a special license, and he didn't get the license. So I guess that's why he got in trouble, because he, he fell into a trap. Not knowing all the specifics, and I want to be careful that I don't fear monger, I don't want to dwell on that too much. I mean, it is a, a kind of like a yikes story. You can't buy farm fresh meat from a farmer. And I guess not. I mean, I watched a John Stossel report on YouTube a while back. Apparently... Farmers cannot take food to your local meat processor guy. You know, you have them all over the place. That's where I used to buy all my meat was these little meat guys. They come, you know, just they're all over a small little town. He, he butchers meat for you. As a matter of fact, I bought a pig one time until I learned how to butcher my own pigs and all that. The very first time I bought a pig, took it over to a guy in town over. He slaughtered it skinned it and all that and then he took it over to the butcher and the butcher processed it into the cuts that we wanted but apparently according to John Stossel that is I guess not as legal as it used to be or you can't sell the meat but I mean there's more and more restrictions on this but this reminds me of back in the 90s Now I don't have all the specifics on this but back in the 90s apparently the government saw that there was a guy and he had an acre of wheat he lived near state lines don't quote me on all this but he lived in state you know next to the state line and he was selling his wheat you know off the side of the road or whatever apparently if i remember right he got in trouble because he was violating the interstate clause of the constitution or whatever where you can't sell products across state lines which i don't think that's true but that's what he got in trouble for so an acre of wheat and he got in trouble for that what it is is i really think that big business big butchers big processors 
are paying off the government. I mean, there's all these inspections. I used to be in business as a consultant, and I used to go to meat processing laboratories. So not the processor, but the laboratory that did the inspections of the processors. And they look for listeria and salmonella and all those seven, seven deadly viruses that they look for. Well, if that inspection process is so good, then why are there so many recalls every month on food? And we see them all the time. I mean, Carolyn's got a list a mile long. Somehow she keeps track of them. And there's always recalls. So it doesn't improve safety. It's just big business gets to own the market and it shuts all the little guys out, including the Amish guy who wants to serve 4,000 of his friends. Which brings me to a story back when I was raising ducks and chickens. Now, I was not advertising eggs or anything, but one of my friends came over and said, hey, can I have a dozen eggs? I'll give you a couple bucks for it. Said, sure. I don't even remember what we were charging. It wasn't even a charge. They would just, here's some money. They were our friends, not friends, my daughter, was friends with their daughter and so we were pretty well acquainted I trusted them now my neighbor behind me was a jerk I mean absolute jerk and if he could find anything anything to call the cops on he would I mean like your dogs are barking past nine o'clock even though it wasn't a rule he had the cops out there over time more and more people were coming over to the house again never advertised never did anything and they would give me their carton because I, I didn't ever have any egg cartons they give me their empty egg carton Hey, can I have some eggs? And I'd fill up their empty egg carton. They'd give me a couple bucks. Now, this was duck eggs and chicken eggs. Well, one day, a government agency came out. I forget which one, USDA or FDA. I think it was USDA. Came out and says, you cannot sell eggs. It's against the law unless you have a special permit. Well, I thought, that's why I did it. I thought I only needed a permit if I took the eggs off my property and took them to like a farmer's market or something. I didn't realize that if people were coming to my property that I had to have a special permit. I mean, I never investigated it beyond what they told me. I didn't hire a lawyer. I said, fine, well, I, I don't have to sell them. So I didn't sell any more eggs. As a matter of fact, my the, the original couple that came over and said, hey, can we have some eggs? What well, we, we wouldn't even charge them anymore. We just gave them eggs. Their daughter come over, play with our daughter, and she takes some eggs home. I mean, our friends were still getting eggs from us, and I didn't get in trouble anymore. But what I suspect happened is my neighbor, the cranky neighbor, saw that people were coming over, and I was handing them a carton of eggs, and they were handing me a couple bucks, and he, he thought he'd get me. Well, I guess he did. I, I don't know if he got me or not. It didn't hurt me. I mean, it didn't improve my life that I was getting the two bucks per egg, you know, for the carton of eggs. The reason I bring this up is, is again, preppers. Preppers always talk about trading. We'll trade with the community. And if I have eggs or if I have something I can give out to the you know, a person in the community, they can come over and help me with a project that I need or maybe they got something I need. And so this bartering system, these, these preppers are always talking about bartering. Although they've never tested it, they will have no idea if it's gonna work. That's what they intend to do. Here's what I say. SHTF, I hear this a lot. Well, I'll just go out and go hunting. I hear that with preppers also. And I just don't think you're gonna be able to go hunting because I live in a pretty impoverished area. And in this area, I would imagine there is a lot of poaching. As a matter of fact, I know someone poached a deer and the deer didn't die, it ran off to my yard and died in my yard. And there's hardly any wildlife around here, hardly any squirrels or rabbits. Now there's some deer because I would imagine it's harder to poach a deer. So if you're gonna go hunting in an SHTF situation, you're not gonna be able to get any food because everybody else is gonna be hunting also. That being said, during this transition from a society that is not in SHTF to a society that is in an SHTF, you got this transition period where laws are still gonna be enforced. Think about the virus and the lockdowns. We were all locked down, shelves were empty, it's not like you could have went out and illegally got a, a deer. The conservation officers would have still came out and arrested you and fined you. And so you got that transition period where you're just going to have to deal with the law still. So how long is that transition period where the shelves in the store are empty, gas prices so high you can't go anywhere, 
you can't go hunting because because the conservation officers are still going to come out and get you and so you start selling your eggs or your beef or whatever it is you have your rabbits and the USDA comes out and gets you yeah so there how are you going to barter in between that transition period between normal society and SHDF you're not you're gonna get in just as much trouble oh I know there's gonna be trolls or you know somebody out there I'll do it anyways you watch me I'll stand my ground and all that kind of stuff but the reality is as you won't they'll come out and they'll just shut you down so what I am suggesting is focus on four things for your shtf food water shelter and defense that's all you need so we have our food we got our chickens we got our eggs we're able to can our food we are able to cook our food we've got all the processes already in place we already know how to do it we've been we do it every day we got our water i've told you about our well and i've showed you that we got a backup spring down there that we could get water from we've got two backup pumps we can run our well off the solar panels. We can run our well off the generator. Of course, during SHTF, you're not going to have the generator, but we can run it off the, the solar panels. I'm looking into a simple pump or some sort of pump where I can hand pump the water if I need to. I don't think I'm going to need to, but I'm going to get a backup system one of these days and do it that way. And then we have the shelter, and it's a very sturdy shelter, very small, easy to heat. Got all our firewood for our heat we don't need an air conditioner we've proven that we don't need an air conditioner of course we need heat i think heat is more dangerous and i've even looked up the studies we've got 15 years worth of heat in our firewood and then we got our defense i think we have a very solid defense a lot of people don't agree with me that's just a difference of opinion you can agree with me or not i feel like i have it nailed down if i don't then that's my own problem so there's no reason to argue about it. If, so if you can click that super thanks button down there, I'd really appreciate it. So if I can inspire you to rely on yourself so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.